Hi guys, I thought I would do a quick product empties just because I'm tidying my room and I really want to throw these away but I've been storing them for so long. This isn't even all of them. Um, some for the body, some for the face, some regular, some new. So I feel like I just get into it quickly because this is a simple video. This is April Skin. The brand is April Skin. I'm such a noob, why can't I get this to focus? April Skin, there you go. This is the Carotene IPMP Exfoliating Body Wash. It's basically a body wash with salicylic acid in it. Sometimes I get acne on my chest, not a lot, but I think in combination with having PCOS and also going to the gym and sweating a lot, I think that's why I sometimes get like just a couple of breakouts like on my back, shoulders and chest. I normally use pretty much anything with salicylic acid in it. I like to try a lot of them because I don't have that much acne on my chest it doesn't bother me that much if i have a few pimples so for me it means that i don't mind trying new products and if they don't work then that's annoying but at least i can report back to you and tell you that it didn't work i normally use like the cerave salicylic acid face cleanser just for the body i'll rub it into a lather and then i'll just leave it on the affected areas and then i'll like i don't know shave my legs or do something else in the meantime just for a few minutes what i find with the cerave one is that it is quite drying it does help the skin and the acne clear up but it's just quite drying what i really liked about this one is that it's also quite hydrating so i found my skin would a clear up but also be left quite soft and smooth and I feel like there's a very noticeable difference between the CeraVe one and this one and this would definitely be my preference. The only thing I don't like about it is the packaging is so, like it looks good. I like looking at that in my shower but the packaging is very like hard so when you're trying to squeeze a lot of it out like you haven't really got much. Well I guess there's a tiny little bit left but this is the thing, it's like impossible to get that tiny little bit out just because what am I squeezing? Like it's just impossible to get it out but I really enjoyed this, I would buy it again. Obviously it's not that easy to buy because it's a Korean brand. I did really like this and I would recommend it. The next thing is something you'll probably recognise, the Purito Unscented Centella Serum. I've tried the new version, if you want to know what I think of that, there's a video on my TikTok where I compare the new one to the old one, I talk about what's changed and what I think about it. But I have got a huge backlog of this because I've been using it for four years so I would just stock up. I used the new one for a week, it seemed fine, it seemed pretty similar to the old one to be totally honest, I think it was more of a packaging change, um, but I'm back to using my backlog of these because I don't want them to go out of date. This is obviously one of my favourite serums, it's great for boosting your barrier health, giving you a glow, for keeping your skin clear, like I could go on and on about how I love it. Um, if you're new you won't have seen this but if you've been around for a while and you follow me on TikTok or Instagram you'll know that I use this morning and night every single day. The only thing about this, so it's got centella, peptides, what else? Madagascaride, um, ceramides, but it also has niacinamide and some people say that when they use this they break out and I would put that down to either, I mean it could be anything but I'm just hypothesizing, I would put it down to either some people's skin not getting on with centella, even though it's supposed to be soothing, you can really be allergic or disagree with anything. Or the niacinamide, because not everybody gets along with niacinamide, even though it's such a great ingredient, I know a lot of people would rather niacinamide just stop being in so many skincare products, but I'm afraid I do really like niacinamide, so I will forever purchase this, I think. Next one I've got is an eye cream. This is by Dr. Sam's. It's the Flawless Nightly Eye Serum. It's really small packaging, comes in a pump. I've been using this for a long time. I would estimate two years now. It's one that I will always have, like I already have a replacement down there that I'm using. This one contains shea butter and a mix of retinoids, I believe. Niacinamide, it's essentially a retinoid eye cream that's also very hydrating. I reach for this all the time. I do rotate it with the Beauty of Joshin Retinal Eye Serum and also more recently the Hari Hari Wonder Bakuchio Eye Cream. I really like that one at the moment as well. I think a lot of people get put off by... Why is this not focusing? I think a lot of people get put off by Dr. Sam products because they're expensive, but I really have been using this for the best part of a year. So if this is something that you want to try, just know that it will last you a long time. And if you divide the cost by the amount of times you're, of use you're getting out of it, it actually won't be that expensive, but I appreciate on the face of it, it is quite expensive. Next, I've still got a little bit left in this, but you can kind of see around, this is where it gathers around the edges. Um, but I've already ordered my replacement because I'm going on holiday and I don't want to be without it. It's the Ultraviolet Clean Screen SPF 30. I wish it was SPF 50, but it's not. It's tinted, I'll show you. Looks very pale, it is. I'm wearing it right now. I'm wearing it right now, although I do think this camera has like some sort of skin blurring thing in it and I haven't worked out how to turn it off yet. I have a love-hate relationship with this product because I repurchased it several times, so clearly there's something about it that I like. 
I get compliments on my skin when I wear it, but I feel like it makes me a little bit self-conscious of my skin. When I first put it on in the morning, it looks really dewy and glowy. It evens out your skin tone nicely, assuming you're the colour of Casper the Ghost, because it's definitely not going to work on darker skin tones, which is one thing that just does annoy me about tinted sunscreens, because they always say the tint is uni universal, but it's just, it's like, who are you, who are you fooling? Like, who are you trying to fool? We can, we can clearly see that it's not. But it's more, the thing that I don't like about it is that in the afternoon, it's like dried down and it feels quite chalky how mineral sunscreens often feel. And I don't like it under makeup. A lot of people say that it's a good base for makeup. I totally disagree. Like, I like my makeup dewy and I can't be putting dewy makeup on a chalky base. For me, if I were to put, apply makeup on top of this, I feel like I was applying cream products over powder products. And I don't know who likes the feeling of that other than Patrick Tarr for blush. But for me, it's a no. I continue to buy this because it doesn't break me out, it doesn't bother my perioral dermatitis which is the rash I get around my mouth and people do seem to compliment me on it when I wear it. I just wish it was dewier for the whole rest of the day and I also wish it was SPF 50. And sometimes I wish it wasn't tinted as well but I change my mind on that quite a lot. Next we have Finacea, this is obviously the new one that I've opened because I lost the empty but it was like, you know when it's like a metal pack and you've like wound it in over itself just to try and get like the tiniest little bit out a bit like a toothpaste packaging that's how it was so i was pretty desperate to get a new one of these finacea is prescription strength azelaic acid and it was recommended to me by my dermatologist who was dr sam bunting and i really like it it's not changed my life that would be an exaggeration but it's definitely calmed my face down it does bits for my texture it brightens my skin I'm not gonna lie, like, my skin was pretty bright before because I was using a retinoid for four years before, but I do think this just adds that extra 5%. It just calms my skin down, it makes me tolerate my retinoid better. That's the reason I use it, because I got perioral dermatitis, and Dr. Sam told me that azelaic acid is essentially anti-inflammatory, which I didn't realise at the time. It's not an ingredient that I'd ever looked into that much and it can help people who don't tolerate retinoids very well tolerate retinoids better. I really feel like it has played out like that for me, so... I feel like this is the sort of thing I always have on hand. It's also good for calming down breakouts. If you get some sudden breakouts and you want to calm the skin down, it's quite good at making them go away quicker and just like soothing redness. This is a really popular product to be prescribed for people with rosacea because azelaic acid is very powerful for redness and skin soothing. So I do recommend this for most people because unlike a retinoid, it doesn't really take much getting used to. There's not really a purge. There might be a small one, but it's the adjustment period is usually quite easy and it also goes well with a lot of other skincare actives and a lot of other skincare ingredients so i do like this one i'm gonna be honest there's not gonna be many that i wouldn't recommend because if i didn't like it i'd probably i'd probably find a way to finish it but i wouldn't be finishing it on my face if i really didn't like it i'd probably just use it on my hands and stuff so most of these will be recommendations the next one i've got is the sand and sky anti-aging eye cream this is the second one I've gone through of this product. The previous one had slightly different packaging. It was still this colour, but the bottle was a different shape. They had to make the pump a bit uglier because the previous pump looked nicer. But you know when you the pump's not pumping anything out, but there's loads of products stuck around the sides? That was what was happening. I really like this eye cream. Um, it's got 8% vitamin C and a blend of peptides in it and I love the gel texture, it's very refreshing, and I do feel like I saw a visible change in the brightness of my under eyes. I don't have anything on my under eyes now other than the tinted sunscreen. What I mean by that is, I wouldn't say darkness under my eyes is something that I suffer with, but I do notice a difference when I use this product, and it plays nicely with my other skincare. I wanted to use two bottles of it, so clearly something was good about it, and, um, yeah, it just felt really, really refreshing and I look forward to putting it on. Lastly, we have one that I'm pretty sad about. This is the Jordan Samuel Aftershow Treatment Cleanser for Sensitive Skin. Two versions of this, the Sensitive Skin one and the Non-Sensitive Skin one. And the Non-Sensitive Skin one is being discontinued, I've heard. People are telling me this, but I actually haven't seen it. Apparently it's on the website. But the Sensitive Skin one is, being con is not being changed or discontinued, so I'm happy about that. What I'm sad about is Jordan said that the big, this is the... 240ml version has been discontinued because people weren't buying it enough, so fair play to him. What is he supposed to do, keep producing a product that isn't selling? 
that makes no sense. But it, I was buying it, I'll tell you that, and it's just, it lasts so long and it's just so worth the money. It's an oil cleanser. Now I've got, I'm using my last one of the big ones that I have, but after that I have to use the small ones. And they won't last as long, but they do travel well. This is just a really simple oil cleanser. It's a gel formula, and then when you rub it between your hands, it doesn't turn into like a liquid, but it goes into like a very slippery substance, a bit like if you warmed butter between your hands, that kind of thing. Quite a minimal ingredients list. Um, one of the biggest components is olive oil, basically, olive fruit oil. But yeah, I love this. I've been using it since 2020. It doesn't break me out. It takes off my makeup like a dream. I have heard some people say they don't like this because it leaves a film on their skin, but I have never experienced that. The thing I would say is if you're not using a water-based cleanser to wash it off afterwards, that's probably why, because oil cleansers aren't really designed to be used on their own and then other skincare put on, because otherwise the oil residue can just break you out. So I don't know if that's what has been happening to those people, but I've Never felt that way about this cleanser, and this is my ride or die. And Jordan, if you ever discontinue it, I will, will have to have serious chats. Lastly, I, th I have like six more of these empties over there, but it's my ride or die. Cetaphil Daily Hydrating Moisturizer. Maybe there'll be like a tiny bit. No, there's not. Basically like a liquid hydrator. So it's like a moisturizer that feels very liquidy and like quite watery, but it packs such a punch of hydration that it moisturizes, in my opinion, a lot more than a thicker cream. Um, a lot of people use this and they feel like it's not going to do enough and I feel like that's more of an illusion because you assume it's not going to do much because it's so watery but when you actually think about it like I've gone whole days where I haven't applied SPF maybe it's just a, I'm not feeling well that day or something and I just use this and by the end of the day my skin still feels so hydrated. It plays super nice under, under SPF you know how sometimes the two can disagree. It plays nice under makeup, like it just... The only thing I would change is I wish it were a bigger bottle because it's... It doesn't feel like it lasts that long. I'm gonna ask them to see if they would like to make a bigger bottle, maybe with me. But even if not, I would buy it. So that was all of my empties. Let me know what you wanna see next and I'll try and compile some more empties for next time. Bye.